2 Samuel chapter 8. And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methachiah out of the hand of the Philistines. So he's gaining property. He's gaining lands. Israel's growing as far as land. He smote Moab and measured them with a line. Now who is Moab to David? That's where his great 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 grandmother Ruth came from. And that measures. Let's look at Ruth 3.15. It's interesting what the Holy Spirit does with words. It says measure their line. And Ruth 3.15. I don't know what much to it. But I just thought it was interesting. And I'm in standing. I think it's in. Ruth 3.15. And also he said. Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when he, when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her. And she went unto the city. Here David measures out between the, the men of Moab. Casting, that's the first time that word shows up. Casting them down to the ground, death. Even with two lines measured he to put to death, and with one line to keep alive. So what did David do? What's the expression here? He drew a line in the sand. Right between the, the, the people of Moab, he goes and he draws a line. And they're looking at him. He says, these people on this side, they die. These people on this side, they stay alive. Do you know a place in the Bible where Jesus stood down the ground and wrote something? And they wanted someone dead? And yet that person didn't die that day. Isn't it remarkable David is a type of Jesus Christ. That woman was taken in adultery. Everybody, oh, let's stone her to death. Let's, come on, Jesus, be cruel, be wicked, be the law. And he showed mercy. So this is where you get draw the line in the sand. And with, a, with one full line to keep alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So David is stretched out to the Moabite area now. And David smote also Hadadzezer, the son of Rebab, king of Zobah, as he went to recover the border at the river Euphrates. Now he's over in Babylon area. He's over in Iraq. The land of Israel under David is all the way to the river Euphrates. And you can find that on any map of the Middle East. He's as far as the Philistines. That's where the PLO is today. That's the Dead Sea. I mean, the, the Mediterranean Sea. And it goes all the way from there all the way up to the Euphrates. David is growing land in the land of Israel. And David, uh, David took from him a thousand chariots. 700 horsemen, 20,000 footmen, and David hot. That's to cut the sinews, the muscles, all the chariot horses, but reserve of them for a hundred chariots. And there are some say that he did this because of the sexual worship of horses of these people given to the gods. And when the Syrians, that's the first time that word shows up, and that's today, Syrians. We got Syrians in the newspapers today. Of Damascus came to succor. That means to help, to aid. That's the first time that succor shows up. It's, there's two or three other places, one of them is in Hebrew. He came to help or aid, succor, had a Caesar, king of Zobah. Zobah. David slew all the Syrians, two and twenty thousand men. So the Syrians came to go get Hadadzezer. David steps in and helps them. David put garrisons. That's the first time that word shows up as a plural. And that's troops. That's military. That's armament. That's supplies for the military. In Syria of Damascus. Well, isn't that Damascus? Paul was on the road to Damascus. That's how old that place is. And the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. So there's peace, there's war, there's 
giving to David. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. The Lord's doing it. Preserved, kept alive. Like you take jelly, you preserve it. Grapes, you preserve it. Keep it up. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadrezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Betta, from Beriathai, cities of Hadrezer, King David took exceedingly much brass. And when Toi, king of Hamath heard that David had smitten all the hosts of Hadrezer, then Toi sent Joam, his son unto King David, to salute him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadrezer and smitten him. For Hadrezer had wars with Toi. So here Hadrezer is an enemy of Toi. David defeats Hadrezer. Toi is like, he sends his son, David, thank you very much. <laughs> you got rid of one big headache for me. And Joram brought with him vessels of silver, vessels of gold, and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations whom he said do. What's he dedicating to the Lord? We're going to see later. This is the, the material that Solomon is going to use to build that temple. And of Syria, and of Moab, and of the children of Ammon. Of the Philistines, and Amalek, there's that name again, he's supposed to be wiped out. And of the spoil of Hadrezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. David got him a name when he returned from smiting all the Syrians in the valley of Saul, being 18,000 men. He put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom put he garrisons. And all they of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David with her. So it knows how that's repeated. A verily, verily. That is important to God that he repeated it. And David reigned all over Israel. And David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. So David judged and he judged with justice the Israelites. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host, that's military captain, military leader. And Josephat, the son of Ahilub, was a recorder. That's the first time recorder shows up in the Bible. Now, most of the stuff we're reading right now would probably be written by Jehoshaphat or somebody under his command, because that's what a recorder is. All right, David, how many people was that in the Valley of Saul? 18,000. Okay, David. That would be the one who's writing or somebody under the authority what we're reading today. Now, it may not have been David that wrote what we're reading. It may be places where David did write. But the recorder would be the one that writes things down. And Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Elimech, that's the one that came after uh, Saul was killing the priest. The son of Abiathar, he's killed by Saul and I forget what the Doag, were the priests. So when you get the Chronicles, you get to the names, you see Zadok, you see Abiathar, you can see where you are. The genealogy. And Syriah was described, that's the first time that word shows up, and that's the person in charge of the scriptures. His job is to recopy and make sure you recopy right the Holy Scriptures. He's in charge, you know what, this, this, this scroll looks a little bad, we need to redo it. He would be in charge of where the scrolls are kept. Who gets them? Who puts them back? And Ben and I, the son of Jehoiada, was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief rulers. So he put his sons in rulership. Now, keeping your place there and 1 Chronicles 18. 1 Chronicles 18.1. There's a little more information in, in First Chronicles, not much, but keeping your place in both places and to make notes. In First Chronicles 18:1, now after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of Philistines. And it said in Methanama, oh, that's got to be in Gath. 
First Chronicles tells you exactly where you are. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. Doesn't record the line. And as all four Gospels don't record all the details. You say, well, you know, that's discretion in the Bible. No, it's not. When a police officer interviews witnesses of an accident, he does not get the same story out of all the witnesses. Why will you give man credit, but you won't give God credit? And David smote Hadarezer, king of Zobah, unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. His dominion to the river Euphrates. Now, in 2 Samuel, it says his border. The city, the drawn line of Israel was at the river Euphrates, and David has dominion there as a king. And David took from him a thousand chariots, seven thousand horsemen, twenty thousand footmen. David also hawked all the chariot horses, but reserved for him a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadrian, Ezer, king of Zobad, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Sadagmachus, Syriadachmus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whither so he went. David took the shields of gold that were that were on the servants at Ezer and brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise from Timnah and from Chun, cities of Hadariza, brought David very much brass. Okay, here's a note. Wherewith, they, wherewith Sol, Solomon made the brazen sea, the pillars, and the vessels of brass. So in 1 Chronicles 18, we're told what that brass did. The brazen sea, the pillars, and the vessels of brass. There it is. And now when told, told king of Hamath heard how David had spent all the hosts of Hadarezer, king of Zobah. He sent Hadarim, his son, to King David, inquired of his welfare. How'd you do, David? You okay? Get any wounds? Everything okay? A little more extra information. And Samuel says to salute, Chronicles says, congratulate him. So when you make a salute, according to the Bible, 1 Corinthians 18 and 2 Samuel 8, when you salute the flag, you're congratulating the flag. Scripture with scripture. Don't get mad at me because you don't want to hear the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Wow. You're congratulating. What did the flag do? Because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him. For Hadarezer, there's a note, parentheses, for Hadarezer had war with Toa. So Toa now, hey, all right, things are great, happy, peace. Thank you, David. And with him, his, his, his son, all men are investors of gold and silver and brass. And that went going to the Lord. Then also King David dedicated to the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom, from Moab, and from the king children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from Illuminae. Now, why did God repeat that in 2 Samuel 8? And the, exper the, the explanation is found in 1 Chronicles 18, because all the stuff that David, these cities that we read about, everything repeated of these nations went to God. Nothing went to his welfare. Nothing went to his own. It was piled up for Solomon to build that temple. That's why it's repeated. The second time is for God. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, slew the Edomites in the Valley of Saul, 18. Now that was not mentioned in 2 Chronicles, 2 Samuel 8. Abishai was not mentioned. He said there was, there was a battle at the Valley of Saul. Chronicles gives the name of who fought the battle. Abishai. Again, that's David's cousins or nephews or something like that. That's his sister's sons. And just for uh, Zariah. Those right for my name. I'm going to say I couldn't remember her name. Zariah is his sister. <laughs> Fun getting old. And he put garrisons in Edom. And all the Edomites became David's servants. 
Thus the Lord preserved David with so here. Now the Edom, who are they? That's Esau's. And they're angry with Israel. And this is one of the things that Edom gets mad at Israel is because David's in control of them now. And when God sends Babylon to come in and releases that bond of the Edom, you'll see it further with kings, the Edomites were set free. But this is the promise that Isaac gave to Jacob. Your brethren are going to rule over you. Here it's happening. Here is the blessing of Isaac to Jacob. Your brother is going to rule over you. And they hate it. And they'll get free later on with the king. And they'll try to get their full revenge when Nebuchadnezzar comes in. Remember, Jacob got that blessing. Jacob got the full thing. Esau, he got, you know, a haphazard blessing. So David reigned all over Israel, over all Israel, and executed judgment and justice among all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host, military leader. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahitub, recorder. And Zayach, the son of Ahitub, and you can follow that family line, and Abimelech, the son of Biathar, were the priests. Shashika, his scribe. Now, I think it says Shari. It's a different spelling. It's a different language. It's, a, it's all it is. Or it could be another name the guy. Nothing wrong. And Benaiah, the son of Jedi, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And the sons of David were chief about the king. And he called them chief rulers. David had the authority. But these men were under his authority, his sons. 